Okay, back again, and uh, <clears throat> excuse me, and today we're back on episode 13. Last episode I marked it as 13, it was actually 12. I'm, I've been in a big rush. I'm trying to get things done. When it gets real cold here in Illinois, I really don't work out in the garage, so anything around 32, I don't work on anything. So it's been a couple months since I've worked on anything. And this bike I had made a whole series on, so it's actually allowed me to stay out of the garage and stay healthy and working instead of being in the garage and sick working on stuff. But, you know, basically what we're going to do here today is we're just going to change the fluid inside the forks. The forks were not leaking. Um, usually I would go in, if I tore this far into the bike, I would replace the seals, but the seals were actually good and um, I didn't replace the seals because they didn't need replaced. We did order them just in case I didn't need them, but we're not, we didn't replace them. So this video here is just gonna be on refilling the fluid. And as you'll notice in this video, I will actually use Amsoil five weight oil. Uh, the OEM standard weight oil is eight weight. Uh, Amsoil offers five to 10, uh, five or 10 weight. Uh, 10 weight would have been okay, but I talked to Nick and we kind of uh, talked through his riding style and the roads here in Illinois are really bad, so I want those forks with the with the weight of the oil to actually react to potholes and crummy roads. So we actually decided to go with five weight to allow the fluid to go through the uh, all the all the dampening rod and the internals of the forks faster. So we want the forks to react faster, and then we can kind of manipulate uh, how the bike is going to react on the road with the adjustable settings. So we're actually going to use five weight oil. Um, and if you can check me out on Instagram, I'm really uh, deciding to get away from Facebook. Um, I've been on Facebook on my business for over a year and a half to almost two years and I'm not seeing a lot of uh, positive stuff on Facebook and every time I get on Facebook it kind of brings me down a little bit with with other people's posts and everything so I'm veering away from Facebook for my business and I'm actually getting more shooting more toward Instagram and actually on Instagram you can hit me up on Instagram if you uh, leave a comment on YouTube Hit me up on Instagram and uh, I get right back to you, but I actually do not have Facebook on my phone anymore uh, or the Messenger program because I'm not, I'm not real big on them spying on me and uh, documenting. Now, Instagram is owned by Facebook, but it's a totally different deal. Um, uh, the one thing I do want to say when you tear these forks apart is you need to pay attention to the removal of the internal parts. And in this video, I'm going to walk you through on the whole disassembly of the fork and then the reassembly, but it, the, these forks need to go back together how they came apart. Um, and then the other thing, in this video you will notice that I will take um, the fork springs and put a zip tie. When I remove the fork spring from the forks, I'm going to put a zip tie on the top of the fork. Um, and actually what you can do is you'll be able to pull or reinsert that fork spring in there with the, with the oil in there. Uh, it makes less mess, it's easier to do, but also the zip tie being on the top of the fork spring actually will tell you that that is how the fork spring came out and back in. I can't even tell you how many people tear their forks apart and just take that spring out and set it aside and then all of a sudden they say, huh, I wonder which way the fork springs come out. You know, and sometimes the fork springs will be coiled more toward the bottom or more toward the top, but those fork springs need to go back in the way that they came out, uh, especially if they don't, they don't have the extra coil on the bottom or the top and you really don't know, but both fork springs need to be the same. So mark them with a zip tie, pull them out, try that method. It works really well, uh, easy to do. Took me took me a long time to figure that out, something that simple. But uh, yeah. And then I want to get into, I actually have another sportsman in the garage. And I'm looking at it right now and it's got, <laughs> it's got deer blood. I'm guessing deer, I don't know what kind of animal. It's got blood all over it. I actually, I was going to tell him to clean the four-wheeler before he brought it over, but it was snowing and... Uh, I missed him the week before, so I want to try to get this thing cleaned up here. But I'm actually running into a small problem. I'm not going to be taking on too many more projects here. Uh, over here on this side, I have actually kind of a rare motorcycle that cost about $30,000 when it was produced. Uh, it's a super bike, and I need to start working on it because I bought it about six months ago, and I really don't, I'm really not even sure what I bought. I haven't even touched the thing. It's got about an $1,800 exhaust system. It's in pretty much mint shape. It's only got 6,000 miles, but I need to get that bike running and on the road. That was my dream bike when I was 16 years old, and I finally worked and worked and worked and got my debt to where I could afford this bike, and I bought this bike off a, off an owner that I, I couldn't believe I found one in Illinois. Um, th these bikes are available, but you usually have to ship them in. They were real popular in you know California, Florida, New York, 
where there's where there's more income and actually an Aprilia dealer that's closer to you. But uh, yeah, and I'm running tight on space. Um, that's another thing that I got going on is I'm not real sure how long. I don't. I, I, I'm not sure on YouTube really how personal I want to get, but uh, I, I'm not so sure that I'm going to be living in this house too much longer. I am really tapped on space. Everything I have is, I, I've had to go up the walls. This is a very small garage. It works for what I'm needing it for, but I need more room. So, uh, yeah, I'll just show you the Sportsman here and then show you really how tight the space is. And that was another thing of me getting out here today. It's a little above freezing. I need to get this garage clean. I never, never have this much clutter and stuff, but it's just been so cold that I haven't done it. But, uh, as you can see with this four-wheeler in here, get this camera unhooked. With this four-wheeler in here, I am just tapped. I mean, I'm tapped for space. I can't even get my car in here. And then we're gonna go through on the on the sportsman here, and I have a good sportsman video set. Every fluid in this in this four-wheeler is gonna go to AMS oil. Uh, it's pretty low mileage, low hour four-wheeler. Um, Said it was a 2008, so it's 11 years old. So we'll get all the fluid changed out of that. That'll be a whole nother series. But I mean, I am just, I'm tapped for space. And I've just got too much going on and not enough time to work to, to work on it. So, you know, I have to make a decision here. What, what am I gonna do? Uh, I just got done following my taxes this year and with my business, am I gonna expand or am I gonna contract? And I feel like the only way I'm gonna expand is to either lease a building or buy a bigger house. So, I mean, I'm just I, I'm just tapped for space. So, uh, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoy this video. It's it's pretty detailed, and uh, we'll get into this here.
see how dark that oil is. I don't think that oil's ever been changed.
Now what I have done is I've actually pre-measured my fork oil a little over the 16 ounce mark because we're going to measure the air gap after we put it in and the amount that it needs is I think 15.6 and you have a little leeway on the ounces but when we measure the air gap if I put a little more in then I'll pull it out um, to set it to the correct air gap setting so putting more in isn't that bad as long as you set your air gap otherwise you don't want to do that Now what you're going to do is you're going to fill your fork tube up and make sure that your fork tube's all the way down. And after we get the, the oil, the new uh, fork oil put in here, you're going to want to pull that rod out, uh, you know, three or four times and get the fluid built up into the rod before you measure the air gap. You're going to pump this rod until you see the fluid come out of the top of the rod. See it's starting to get primed right now. And it's sucking all the fork oil into the, the rod system and it'll come out, there it goes. see it's starting to come out that means it's primed just do it slow and you're forcing all the air out of it and when you're doing this make sure that the fork oil is coming out of the front the, this piston tube itself it may take more than three or four like I said because you're basically priming the system and it'll shoot out of there if you if you take this <laughs> if you take this rod and let it drop down that, that fork oil will shoot right out of there but you need to make sure this is done before you set your air gap And what you're doing here is, I've already preset my height for the, the fork oil tool for the 4.6 inches from the top. You're measuring from the top to the liquid. So what we have here is we have our base and our metal rod here, and then we're going to pull the fork oil, excess fork oil out to the setting that I've set it. And then that's your, that's your air gap.
we get to put back together. Get off this, it's kind of dangerous how I did this. What you want to do is go ahead and do your other fork just like that one and then uh, we'll we'll set all the fork settings for here uh, back to the factory setting and then we'll retorque this top cap once it's on the bike and stable in the triple trees.